I know that at least two of you maybe have used Stadia before. Um, but this is honestly just a really funny story that we thought we'd uh, we'd throw it in. Where... <laughs> what a headline. What a headline. Oh, cookies. That we've been GDPR'd again. Yep. So... And we've been oh pop up again. Oh my gracious. Cheers, Bloomberg. <laughs> oh. And you're asking me to sign in? No? Yeah. No, thank you. Oh, so, here's the man himself. There, big oh, Jason so. himself. Here's TLDR, right? Stadia, the whole thing's went to shit. We, we know that. Uh, they, they, they hired Jade Raymond, who had headed up loads of big things. Yeah, big um, the whole shtick was, we're going to get Jade, and she's going to help form these studios. They're going to make these first-party games that like truly use what Stadia can do. And if you're being like, oh, we're humbug, uh, I mean, fair enough, I'm kind of the same, <laughs> but. Sure. What Stadia can do in terms of truly massively multiplayer experiences, yeah. the tech stack of something like Stadia mm. will be able to give you, you know, if you want that planet side, I don't know, planet side oh, 10 yeah. with uh, 5,000 versus 5,000, you know, truly. <laughs> Mag 2. <laughs> games with scales that would dwarf what would happen in World yeah. of Warcraft and still remain performant, uh, Stadia's tech stack would let you do that. But who the hell is going to make a game for that? The answer, Google, because it's their first party thing. Hmm. But Stadia didn't do well enough, so Jade Raymond is gone. All of the game developers have been fired. The studios are dead. It's been a humongous waste of time, money, effort, and everything. And once again, Phil Harrison has led a whole bunch of people mm -hmm. into a big failure. Um, and it, we just get really some color on it from yeah. Jason's article that is... It's so juicy. And mm -hmm. to be honest, it, it's not juicy at the expense of developers. It is juicy at the expense of how stupid Google are. Um, I mean, I, I, I know it's funny. Here we are in YouTube gaming, which we have a clip uh, that is primed on our clips channel. Um, that is me explaining why we prefer YouTube gaming over uh, over Twitch. But even at that, I mean, it's just another big soulless company. Mm. Yep. So one of the, the really funny things here is it's <laughs> even just skimming the article and the bits where it's like, the features that Phil Harrison said, or promised, are thus far non-existent. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where they did that, you know, minimum viable pro... Basically, there was there was some talk, I think, in Jason's article where it was ungoogle like in yes. how it went out with so much bluster, yeah. and this is the future of games. This changes everything. They basically <laughs> did one of our titles and thumbnails for a minimum viable pro uh, product, right? Yeah. That's what they did with Stadia, but it was still an MVP. I, I don't know if Jason gets into that, but the, I mean, the talk about the pomp and circumstance of it being very un-Google, 100% true. The actual product, 100% Google product. You know, yeah, sure. half-baked and half-assed is pretty much the TLDR of, of most of Google, it would seem, other than ads. It's probably the one thing they can do super well. I mean, you know, YouTube actually does do the core functions of YouTube pretty well most of the time. Yeah. But, um, sure. so they, they did all of that. Mm -hmm. Sales. We don't have numbers, but in this article, um, if you, the control F hundreds, you'll find it. But in that article, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yep. There's your, there's your quote for you. There's your quote. Yeah. They missed sales and monthly active users by hundreds of thousands. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, that, that, that's, very, very rough. That was to the point where they were actually giving out free controllers with things. Yeah. I got a free, because I'm on YouTube oh, Premium, yeah, that's right. I got a free Stadia controller and Chromecast Ultra. Yep. I've not used the controller. I do <laughs> use the Ultra, so I guess thanks. Um, so that was really funny. And one of the other really funny things that happened in this was... <laughs> it was some of the numbers. I believe they paid $20 million dollars uh, now, $20 million, I mean, that's the budget of a AAA game, for some. Was it like Mass Effect Andromeda was roughly $35 million? That is only if memory serves. But, you know, if a game like Mass Effect Andromeda is like, you know, 30 to 40 mil, and you're dropping 20 million just to get Ubisoft to put The Division and Assassin's Creed on Stadia, what is going on with Google's priorities? Uh, <laughs> it's just it's, so funny. It's the case where I think, uh, I mean, uh, it says here, the amount of money 
Google was willing to spend came as a shock to veteran game developers. And like that's those, especially veterans, they've been around in the big money times. Like, oh, those... I actually I have an anecdote. Mm. I cannot say um, <laughs> okay. uh, you know too much about this, but Good. I've heard a, I've heard a story floating around mm. that um, for a non-exclusivity thing, like for you know, I guess like sort of premium indie vibe, mm. uh, they were willing to throw half a mil. Oh yeah. Uh, in order to just get on the platform not even exclusivity so google are just sitting there burning money and burning money and burning mm. money yeah. all into things that people don't care about because it's <laughs> not at all to me i'm not i'm not going to be like oh i can play assassin's creed in stadia i guess i'll get stadia now because it's the future of gaming 8k 120 fps stadia share <laughs> phil harrison man of hype Asterisk, 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 asterisk everywhere. Yes, asterisk, all of these features may be there in 10 years, perhaps. Phil Harrison might not be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the reason why we're kind of joking on and dunking on Phil Harrison is mm. the last two major things that he did, from what I understand, were launching the PS3 and the Xbox One. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Those are the immediate yeah. losers of their generation. Yeah. To be fair, I don't think he was super involved at the at the yeah. higher end for the Xbox One. I think he was like VP of European Steels or something like that. But he was he was a big player and he was in a lot of the, the marketing for it, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I do remember him him and his uh, big head going, "Hello, here's here's the here's the the console that will replace everything in your media room. This is the media center." Oh, do you remember sports and TV? Uh, I'd rather not. That was, a, that was a funny E3, not, wasn't it? Yeah. The only sports that should be near video games is basically Wii Sports. At least as far <laughs> at least as far as most people are concerned. There's something about oh no Phil. I remember it was I think it was for the video where we covered Stadia stuff. I spent a good like 30, 45 minutes reading about Phil, trying to see if I could actually go, yeah, it's all his fault. Look at what he's ruined. And I couldn't find anything like super definitive, but He's definitely been in the wrong place at the wrong time as an executive, and it yeah. really makes you wonder about about what they got into when they brought him on. I have a feeling that he's probably somebody that's really good at executing a flawed strategy. Yeah, that sounds right. Because I mean, <laughs> outside of the fact that it worked and technically wasn't flawed, if you look at like the early marketing of the PlayStation, and I don't know if he was still around for the PS2 era, mm. but if you remember any of PlayStation marketing, it was so whack. Oh, it's right. completely out there. I should show you some of the PS2 and PSP ads sometimes, because they they somehow worked, but they were like, they were, you take DMT and then storyboard them. Oh, nice. That kind of whack. <laughs> so I think, I think you might be right. I think you might be right about that. Ah, uh, yeah. So, there's that. And then the other, I guess, funny thing is, this is basically just a bunch of people went and they told all the gamers that, no, actually, our innovative tech platform is uh, what you need, gamers, <laughs> yeah. TM, uh, capital G. Uh, the other one that's doing that, and I think a far more sensible way, is actually yeah. Amazon. Amazon yeah. Luna seems better set up, better conceived. Yeah. However, we do. One fun piece of uh, news. I'm sure it'll be here if I click news. <laughs> there, there you go. There's the headline. There's the headline. Cheers, VGC. Thanks, VGC. VGC are a great site, by the way. Oh, yeah. but ads are a bit, bit, um, bit there. Yeah, they uh, do make the good content, though. Yeah, they do. They're uh, good boys, good lads. But there you go. There you go. Yeah, so <laughs> he's gone. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think it was. I think the story's. The third. Obviously, people like follow moving of these people around, but the first time I saw it broke was from a Twitter account. I can't remember who it wasn't one of the big gaming ones. It was just some some, some pundit on Twitter saying it was very funny that uh, they left their head role at the cloud gaming service Luna, which obviously you know here's the future of gaming is in the cloud, and about the journey and focus on local processing stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's not cloud. Yeah, senior vice president and general manager of Unity's Creative Solutions Department. So, there's a slight chance maybe Unity brought yeah. him off for cloud gaming stuff. So maybe it's not quite as funny as that. But definitely, definitely a funny time to funny time to leave. That's for sure. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's just more of that <laughs> stuff generally messing up. And I, I mean, I think it's just platforms coming in there trying to burn all the cash thinking they can wedge their way into a market. And it's not like it's a market where they couldn't belong. It's just that right now they don't belong in that market because they've not done any of the, I think any of the work in a user facing way to actually earn it. And this is what not keeps all. on happening with these groups. Um, it's, the, it's the case where uh, all, whenever Stadia first collapsed, there was a big wave of articles and about everyone going, okay, it was Stadia and Amazon. They're like, these guys are trying to businessify the creative industry of making games, yeah. which isn't going to work. And I think that's that's fundamentally the problem here. They're not going, hey, customers, would you like to have like let's say they're, they're they're aiming for triple a and they're going to make numbers up would you like a 40 hour experience it's like really cool you get super drawn in all this incredible this narrative storytelling this video game experience you know they're like all we have are uh tech boots so <laughs> yeah. would you like 8k like i don't have an 8k tv but i guess it's the future sure so i don't i don't know what they're i don't know what what they're trying to accomplish with that but at least, yeah. at least Amazon's in a slightly better way to proceed because, like they tried to do with the YouTube Premium rollout of video, mm -hmm. go, hello, our monthly active users are way below we want. Can we just give this out, please? The uh, Amazon do so much better with Prime. They're going to benefit so much from the vertical integration they've yeah. got. They're, they're, like, I imagine most people have Prime, especially people who uh, are impulsive. And the deliveries the next day, but it's like uh, Prime Video, Prime Video, Twitch Prime, those two. I don't use Amazon Music, but I will regularly use Prime Video and Twitch Prime and play the games from Twitch Prime without ever thinking about my purchase because it's Prime and it's there. Yeah. And if Prime's the thing you've got, yeah. And if Prime creeps up in price, I'll be like, ah, oh, well, you know, I've got all the stuff. Yeah. So it's a case where if they can throw Luna baseline some decent stuff into there. There's a decent chance I'll use it because I stopped paying for Game Pass. So my my game subscription of course technically is Twitch Prime. So if they can if they can just say, here, you have this by the way, do you want to try it out? There's a decent chance I'll actually engage. Yeah. Like, Whoa. And then nice. from the other angle, they mm -hmm. also have got multiple studios. Yep. They also have AWS. That's mm -hmm. like not customer facing important, but that yeah. is pretty big. Yeah. That's uh, they just have a lot of stuff. They can be a lot more vertically integrated. Um, yeah, so there's that.